The space station is above the horizon now. It is traveling past Mars and Venus from my perspective here in the backyard. And it should be traveling across this little window of sky that I've got. I'm gonna do my best to take a picture of it. Oh my God, I got it. I got it. Hi everyone, this is Trevor Jones from Astro Backyard and tonight I'm gonna to take a picture of the International Space Station through my telescope. Well, I'm gonna to try to anyway, for the first time ever in my life. The International Space Station, or ISS, is a habitable satellite that is in low Earth orbit. In fact, there are seven astronauts on the International Space Station right now. Can you even imagine what it would be like to see the Earth from space? The ISS has been up there since 1998, and it circles the entire Earth in about 90 minutes. You can see the space station in your own backyard if you know where and when to look. I've seen it pass by my backyard sky many times, but I've never actually taken a picture of it through a telescope. It's a tall order, but amateurs take amazing photos of the space station from their backyards almost every day. With that being said, it's a frantic ordeal that requires planning, patience, and a lot of trial and error. The sheer speed of the object moving across the sky and the small size make it the ultimate astrophotography challenge. The space station will pass by my backyard sky just after sunset tonight, and I'll be ready. The plan is to use my biggest telescope to photograph the space Space station, but even through this bad boy, the ISS is going to appear very small. I've got my full frame mirrorless camera attached at the back of the telescope, and I'm actually going to be taking a video of the space station as it zips by. Believe it or not, the trickiest part of this whole thing is getting the telescope pointed at the space station. Unlike all of the deep sky objects I photograph that are essentially fixed in space, moving at a very slow pace, the ISS is absolutely cruising through the sky and will only last about a minute or two. So I've been planning this project for a long time. It's long overdue that I shot the space station and I thought it was the perfect opportunity to get some advice from a good friend of mine. Andrew, thank you so much for agreeing to meet with me quickly because I'm gonna be shooting the International Space Station for the first time. That surprises a lot of people because it's something that's approachable and you know, it doesn't take a whole lot of gear, but it takes the right approach to accomplish this feat. The telescope I plan to use is the Edge 11 SCT at 2800 millimeters focal length. What do you think of that choice in terms of telescopes? Fantastic choice of telescopes. There are some drawbacks to it that we can talk about, but you know, overall that should get you some really great details on the station, provided you get it in frame, which will be your biggest challenge. Am I gonna just be uh, freely moving the telescope in RA and deck? Is it manually locating it like that? Unless you have some kind of software that's driving the, the mount and being able to track that satellite, yeah, it's going to be entirely manually controlled by you. How big is this thing going to be with a telescope of that focal length and a full frame camera sensor? It will be pretty small even at peak. And it depends on your pass, of course, because every pass is a little bit different. It's going to probably be about the size of Jupiter at its peak. So think about the size of Jupiter as it appears in your frame. It'll probably be about that big. So the other thing is focusing and exposure. So my plan was similar to a planet. I'll use the moon because the moon's gonna be out tonight to set the proper exposure. I know it's gonna be bright and in focus as well. So if I focus and set my exposure for the moon, is that gonna work on the ISS? Uh, it can be a little bit of a challenge getting the exposure right. Um, I generally recommend lower exposures, higher gain, but uh, your filters actually play a big role as well. Uh, using something like an IR, uh, IR filter or a red filter um, actually helps get better dynamic range out of that image. That will actually help cut down dispersion too, which make it a little bit crisper, but also it'll mellow out some of that dynamic range so you can get more of more of the details in the shot. Um, but you have to be careful because you can't do it at the expense of your exposure time. If your exposure is too long, the ISS will become a blur and you don't want that. It's really easy to get um, almost a little bit of anxiety when the pass is happening because 
It's very rare in astrophotography where you're having any kind of like a time pressure to do anything. Everything else in this hobby is very relaxed. The ISS transits and passes are not like that because you have really just moments to capture your shot. So what I'm going to tell you is relax, breathe, let the pass happen, do your best, and know that there'll be other passes if you miss this one. Uh, because <laughs> uh, it's very common to uh, to miss a shot. Um, however, if you're if you're rushing too much, you might forget one of these steps uh, and end up not catching anything at all. I'm not gonna lie, I feel like I'm going to miss it on my first try. The comically overgrown catalpa tree right here is way bigger than it was even three weeks ago, so that eats up a lot of my northern sky. I've got the telescope and mount fixed here on the ground, all polar aligned, so it's too late to change the position of that now to somewhere else in the yard, so this is where it's gonna happen, and it's going to start rising from the west. Uh, I'm gonna see Venus pop out soon, and then the space station's just gonna cruise through the western northwestern sky across this way, and that's my brief chance to catch it. Ideally, I would be photographing the space station from my backyard observatory, but it's just got a ways to go yet before it's ready for imaging. I've pre-focused the camera on the most distant object I could find, which is a tree about 100 yards away. Eventually, the moon will get high enough where I can use that to focus on, and then my focus will be set. Exposure's another story, but I'll start with a well-exposed image of the bright moon, and hopefully that translates well on that bright, glowing space station as it flies by. I feel very tense. Uh, I don't normally have this feeling. Astrophotography is supposed to be this relaxing hobby, but uh, I have butterflies right now. <laughs> It feels really weird to take a picture through this telescope without having the telescope mount on. I have it nice and balanced here as best as possible anyway, so I can just manually point and shoot to where the ISS is going to be. Rather than trying to actually follow it in the scope, get to a spot where I know it's gonna be, let it pass through, kind of realign, let it pass through again, and just capture those short frames of it going by. This is an unexpected surprise. Oh my God, is it gone? Oh no, I still see it. Okay, so there's an airplane right in the area where I'm gonna be photographing the space station so I can kind of practice on a moving target. Uh, it was really lit up from the sunlight earlier. Now I can just barely see it. Oh, I've lost it. The fastest frame rate I can shoot with on this camera for video is 60 frames per second in 1080p. So not bad, still utilizing that full frame sensor, give myself a fair shot at actually getting the ISS to pass through. But I'm hoping that 60 frames per second is enough to extract some really nice sharp images of the ISS, but we won't know until I actually try it but I feel like that's probably the best way to go about it using a camera with a video feature like this. If you have 120 frames per second, even better. I actually do have a red dot finder. I had one in the garage. I have never used it or maybe once, but it's right here on top of the finder scope. I taped it, which put it pretty well calibrated in line with the focal plane of my primary telescope. So really got lucky there. It's not perfect, but I will be able to use that red dot finder to find the ISS wide field and then hope that it's within the field of view that my camera sees as well. So uh, we'll see how that goes, but uh, got lucky there. Okay, the space station is officially above the horizon now, passing by Mars and Venus and it's gonna come up in that area of the sky and I've never been so, never had so much adrenaline going into taking a photo of an object in space before. The space station was already in my field of view at this point and I actually started tracking it late. The wind really started picking up and I actually get chills watching this moment. The camera attached to the telescope was recording the entire time. Oh my god, I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it again. I think I might have got it again. 
Oh my gosh. And that's it. That's the only chance I could have had to get it. I think I got it. Ash, come look at the picture I took of the space station. What do you think? What happened? What do you mean what happened? It's the space station. Okay, obviously not the greatest photo. I mean, nine out of 10 people probably wouldn't even know what they're looking at. But it was my first try and I learned a lot and I know exactly what I'm gonna do next time to improve the shot. And this is what astrophotography is all about. If you've been a subscriber of mine for a while now, there's a good chance that you actually care about me in a through the screen kind of a way. And the only reason that's possible is because we've made a connection. You see yourself in me or my experiences and we've connected that way. This is why I feel comfortable sharing moments of failure in my life and just my personal life in general. The best part of documenting my experiences here on YouTube with you is that I'll have an archive for myself to look back on proudly years later. And that's where today's sponsor comes in, Skillshare. It's an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators. Ashley's taking a class on Adobe Premiere right now to help me with these videos and I'm taking one on how to document your life. It's called Document Your Life, Four Ways to Live More Intentionally. This class is exactly what I needed right now and I'm so grateful I came across Nathaniel Drew and his ideas. If you're at a point in your life where you're really interested in learning new ideas and living more intentionally, I think you'll find a class that really speaks to you on Skillshare. The first 1,000 people that use the link in my description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. And thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and letting me keep doing what I love for a living. If you've got some tips for photographing the International Space Station, please let me know in the comments. I could really use some. I will get the shot that I'm looking for eventually, and that much I can guarantee. Thank you so much to Andrew McCarthy for all the helpful advice. If you want to see some amazing shots of the ISS, definitely check him out. And until next time, clear skies. Now that I've told you it's a space station, can you kind of see what it is? Yeah, I mean, there's a bright dot there with some blurry panels. Solar arrays. 